Psalms 91. Goes right to the psalm, doesn't give us any who wrote it or anything. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the shadow of the Almighty, that's God. That's resting in God in a secret place, hidden, protection. And when God hides you and protects you, your enemy ain't going to get you. I will, the writer of the psalm, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. God is my refuge. And a refugee is one that flees to a shelter. So when the psalmist says, I'm, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I'm running to God. And God accepts me. And receives me. And it would picture the cities of refuge. When a man has accidentally slain somebody. He's to run to those cities. And they're to accept him. And hear the trial. And hear the consequences. And if he is innocent. He's to stay in that city. Till the high priest dies. He's my refuge and fortress. Well, what a place to run to. A fortress. A place forted. Certified. Protected. My God. Oh, the psalmist, that's my God. That's my protection. That is my refuge. In him, God, will I trust. So, start off with the psalmist, whoever he is. He's got faith in God. And he proclaims it. Surely he, God, shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. That's a man that, or a person that uses a snare to trap. And from the noisome pestilence. Now, noisome is noxious to the health. Hurtful. Offensive to smell or other senses. It burns your nose. It makes your eyes water. It is a disgrace to your bodily function. That's a good way of describing pestilence. Death. Bodies rotting. The smell of disease. He, God, shall cover thee with his feathers. Now, God doesn't have feathers. It's figurative. I mean, why doesn't the, the Catholic Church, oh, figuratively, we're to eat the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Why, why don't they picture God with feathers? I mean, if you're going to go all the way with, with figurative, okay, go all the way figurative. If you're going to take it all literal, then take it all literal. And under his wings shall thou trust. And this is like Jesus at Jerusalem, as a as a as a chicken would gather, as a hen would gather her broad under her wing for protection. And you would not. And when a when a hen sees a fox or, or a snake or some kind of enemy for her little chick, she gathers them up and they get underneath her and they hide in those wings of her. And they trust her. And that's the saying. His true, the Lord is the way, the truth, and the life, shall be thy shield. Well, the shield of the Christian is faith. And scripture with scripture, the truth shall be thy faith. That's Jesus. What is your faith to be in? Jesus. And buckler. These are, these are, Outfits of a, of a warrior. Buckle is like a belt buckle. And in distress. And in danger. God is our. Should be our shelter. That we run to. And like a mother bird. This gathers up the broad. And this protects them. 
And if in danger, in trouble, in distress, we run elsewhere but God, we've missed the point. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. When God's your protection, when God is your refuge, your strong, your trust, your truth, your shield, there's nothing to fear. Nor for the pestilent that walketh in darkness. Core virus. Who cares? You don't want, I don't want core virus. No, I don't. But I ain't going to run around with, like, with my chicken with his head cut off. I'm going to use some pro, uh, precautions. But I ain't going to go with the worldly ways and the worldly media and the worldly politics who can't protect it. I'm going to just trust, trust God. I'm going to use the precautions. But if God wants me to get coronavirus, He'll bypass the mask. He'll bypass the cleansing of the hand. He will give you coronavirus despite all your protection. Now, there was a king in the Old Testament that got, you know, I want you dead. The man drew a bow out of venture. I mean, he just drew it. And then he launched it. And it got him right between the harness. That guy was wearing his armor. God says, I don't care. And you can wear your armor against a virus. And God says, I want you to die of that virus. I don't care what you're doing. You'll get you when you're down. Nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Listen, we're going to die. God knows how we're going to die. Just keep serving the Lord. Though our days, Moses told us, uh, four score, three score. Let us know the number of our days so we can serve you, Lord. That's what it be about. A thousand shall fall at that side, and ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Gee, I heard this verse quoted with coronavirus. I wouldn't use it for coronavirus, but I mean, if you're going to grab any verse out of for coronavirus, there it is. But in the realm of pestilence of God, and we have seen it through the Bible, somebody who puts their faith and trust in God, and God protects them. God will protect you where the world says, do this. And you say, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to rely on God. And God says, okay, it's fine. And I'm going to protect you without those means. You know, you put those masks on, you listen to us. You may be dissolving your faith in God and trusting in what somebody else is telling you. Now, if you're going to go in a hospital room and, and, and somebody's got a element on that, and you, okay, there's the element. Put the gown on. Put the mask on. Put the gloves on. There is the threat. I'm not saying go out there, you know, stupid, go out there unarmed. But you got to have faith in God, too. Jesus said, he that is whole needs not the physician. But they that are sick. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold. And shall see the reward of the wicked. The wicked. I show that to be the devil, the antichrist. Oh, he'll get a reward. The lake of fire that burneth forever. Because thou hast made the Lord. Well, look at verse 2. I will save the Lord. And in verse 3, he'll deliver thee. Verse 9, because thou has, hey, he goes from himself to third person to second person. Man, he's writing about himself, but he's writing others that have the same faith and the same confidence in God that I have. 
And I'm just a personal testimony to what they are like. In other words, what he's saying is, I'm not the only one. I am not single. There are other people like me with other situations, maybe much different from mine, but we have that same trust. We have that same faith. We have that same shield. We have the same refuge in God. So let me include everybody. That's what a preacher ought to do out of this message. I'm a guilty party. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're all sinners. Not just you, 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 you. We are. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge. See, there he goes back to himself again. That refugee running to shelter. Even the most high, that's God, there's no one else. Thy habitation. Where do you dwell? I dwell with the Lord. I'm with God. The Bible says for the Christian. We are already seated in heavenly places. I'm not going to heaven. I'm already there. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the marriage of Jesus Christ alone. And nothing else. There shall no evil befall thee. Now that's a, that's a bold statement right there. No evil. Evil is the consequence of sin. Evil can also be sin. He says, no evil shall befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. You never got sick? You never got a cold? We're running on some dangerous ground here, but let's keep reading. For he, God, shall give his angels, God's angels, charge over thee, and keep thee all thy ways. And thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. What on earth are we saying here? What is the psalmist saying? Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> let's find this verse quoted. And we'll find out who we're talking about. Matthew chapter 4. And verse 6. Matthew 4, 6. And says unto him, Jesus, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge. Uh oh, there it is. There it is. Psalm 91. Shall give his angels charge concerning thee, Jesus. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said, That's the devil. And the devil is quoting Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. We have, from a weird standpoint, of the enemy of God, Satan saying, verse 11 and 12. And so we see verse 10, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to that dwelling. Who is that? The devil says that's Jesus. And when we read verses 11 and 12, according to the devil, the scriptures according to the devil, that's Jesus. And yet, Jesus did get evil. But it wasn't his evil, it was man's evil when he suffered and died on the cross. He knew no sin, and yet for our sins, he suffered on that cross and died for our sins. I find no fault in him, the broken government says. And yet, he got evil of that cross. Even that very afternoon, the evil that he got of the cross, that was not his cross. That was Barabbas' cross. The evil got sent away. What was that evil? Uh, uh, murder. Insurrection. A known thief. The innocent one. God manifested the flesh. Crucify him.
So let's go back to Matthew 4 and see what the devil has to say. Check what the devil said. <clears throat> Matthew 4, verse 6. And saith unto him, this is the devil speaking to Jesus, if thou be the Son of God, We'll talk about that when we get to Matthew, Lord willing. He shall give the he shall he God shall give his angels, God's angels, charge concerning thee, Jesus, and in thy hands, excuse me, in their hands, they shall bear thee, Jesus, up. At least at any time thou dash thy foot, Jesus' foot, against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And the devil takes him up. Psalm. Ever study to show thyself approved unto God and you're listening to the devil? We have got confidence in the word of God through the devil. What the scriptures say. So let's look at Psalms 91 11. For he, God, shall give his angels, God's angels, charge over thee, who? Jesus. To keep thee, Jesus, in all Jesus' way. That's the devil. Telling us. They shall bear thee, Jesus, up in their hand. Least thou, Jesus, dash thy foot, Jesus' foot, against the stone. Now this is going to happen in second advent. This is not a first advent passage. So we're looking at the Tribulation, Second Advent, chapter of Psalms 91. Let's look at what the devil did not quote. See, he stopped. He stopped at verse 12. And properly so, there's a period, but it doesn't stop. Thou, Jesus, same context, shall tread upon... The lion. Well, who's the lion? Well, Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who's the imitation lion? Our adversary as a lion goes about to seek. There's the devil. And the adder. What's an adder? The serpent. That's a snake. The young lion and the dragon. Well, what does Revelation 12 tell us? There's the devil. You know what the devil stopped? He said, Jesus. You know, call upon the angels to take care of you because that's what the scriptures say. But he didn't quote the part where Jesus is going to bash the brains of the devil out. And lock the devil up that right there. Tread upon the line. The devil is cast into the chains of darkness for a thousand years. 11 and 12 is not first advent scripture. It's second advent. And the dragon, Revelation 12, shall thou trample under feet. Let's go to Genesis 3.15. We don't need to go to uh, Revelation 12. We've been there so often, I hope you know it. That that dragon, that serpent, the old serpent, is the devil and Satan. Genesis 3.15. The devil knows scripture. Now, he may not quote it completely, as he's done here. As he did early in Genesis 3. With Eve. But Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee the devil. And the woman. And between thy seed the devil. And her seed. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. The foot. Imagine the devil is worried about the feet of Jesus. When the devil is going to bruise the feet of Jesus by putting those nails in them. And when he quotes Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12, he doesn't quote the victory of verse 13 of his failure under Jesus Christ. Interesting. Because he has set his love upon me. Whoever the psalm is. Therefore will I deliver him. God will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he knows my name. 
There's a, there's a him. He knoweth my name. But that's knowing the name of Jesus. He shall call upon me. Call upon the Lord. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I wonder what that trouble is. I will deliver him. A place prepared for her. And honor him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the nation of Israel. With long life. Will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. What is that with Israel? God's going to show them the salvation of God. What is that? Jesus. When he comes back to save them from what? In their time of trouble. It's so simple. 